Welcome to video 3 of our first lecture. Let's just recall what we've been talking about. We began 12 slides ago and I'm going to scroll back to the previous slides just to make sure that we are following what we're talking about. We've been having a historical introduction to the concepts of religions with basis on the ideas of cultural universals and cultural rules. The idea is that we are able to discern some of these cultural rules way back in the back by interpreting stories and looking archaeological evidence. In this case, we're recalling that in the area of Mesopotamia, the earliest temples erected were called ziggurats. These ziggurats, the first record we have of their uncovering was by King Nabonidus, a new Babylonian king in 556 BC who was the last king of the Assyrians. Now, this is where the city of Ur is. We'll be talking also about the city of Uruk, and we will be also talking about the library at Nineveh. Today we know that this city that was uncovered by King Nabonidus was the city of Ur, and is one of the earliest cities in the Sumerian empires. Okay? We recall the diverse ancient civilizations, the timelines of these ancient civilizations, the particular timelines of the Mesopotamian region, which starts with Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and later Assyrians. Nabonidus was an Assyrian king that is referred to also as Neo-Babylonian for its type of traditions that he tried to resemble. Why is this all relevant? Because we know that Mesopotamia is one of these clear hierarchical social organizations. And then we began talking about specific things that have been found in the ancient city also of Uruk. Uruk, so we see our, these are the two cities we are being interested in. Now, we left la the last lecture with the Great Walls of Uruk. Okay. Now, why are we talking about walls? Let's recall. We're talking about walls because in order to understand what a wall meant back then, the first thing we can do is to observe our present and think what do walls mean in our context? What could they mean in a context of early city states more than 4,000 years ago? Well, we have very perspe various perspectives during our present day to how walls mean different things for different people. In this case, back 4,000 years ago, we can think, well, what do we have in the written record reflecting upon walls? Very interestingly, we have many documents that were left behind by the peoples that lived in that time. What are these documents and these writing evidence that we have? Well, they are the cuneiform tablets. Here, let me just go back here. As we recalled before, these types of economic transactions records. Okay. Now, for this third video, the idea is that we realize that even though we have the great defensive walls of the city of Uruk, we assume that every city, and we see it actually, we don't assume, we see the archaeological evidence that every city had its major walls, like the ancient city of Ur. This is a, the other ancient Sumerian city in Iraq. We could see the traces of the great walls. Now why is this relevant? Well, both Uruk and Ur are among the richest sites that provide a glimpse to these ancient civilizations. Particularly in the site of Ur, there was a major excavation in what is now called the Royal Cemetery Excavations from 1922 to 1934, directed by Leonard Woodling from the uh, British Museum, collaborating with the University of Pennsylvania. Many of the other things uh, that have been found in these regions, you can go and visit it in, the, in these museums, both in the Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology and in the British Museum. Most of what we know about Sumerian civilizations comes from Western archaeological projects. Now, a caveat here is that all of this becomes highly politicized. Okay? We will be talking about the politicizations of the ancient heritage of humanity in later lectures, but just I want to keep you aware of that. Now, 
These are other pictures of the Ur Royal Cemetery. It's fascinating. You might be able to research this further online. Well, it might not be necessary. But among the most amazing things found in these royal cemeteries was what's called the Standard of Ur. It's basically a hollow wooden box with scenes of war and peace. And it's a fascinating archaeological evidence. It's approximately more than 4,500 years old and was probably uh, constructed in the form of this hollow wooden box with scenes of war and peace represented in each side with mosaics. So these are tiny mosaics that tell this story. Um, still, the original purpose of this uh, this box is enigmatic. It was found in the royal tomb and it was found next to a skeleton uh, of what is interpreted to have been a ritually sacrificed man. Okay. Now, it's also now in display in the British Museum, but it is another amazing, amazing archaeological find. This is the other side of the, this is the peace side of the standard of war. Okay. Now, we've reached the end of our third video. We have small segments and in the next video we will start recalling the Epic of Gilgamesh. Please stay tuned.